hello 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 everyone i'm just laughing because i've not noticed before but i always look down uh, to see the time 7 29 that last minute goes forever but i've never noticed it before but up the top um there's a um a little thing that flashes at me that says you're live you're live and I'm, i've never noticed that before i'm wondering if it's new okay how are we all it was really nice to see some early birds barb and annabelle and estelle and wild woman and kelly thank you kelly that's very kind of you to say that um and who else beverly and cheryl turned 10 kilos of cheap onions into onion jam that is is that not just a big job oh my goodness oh, that is a big job worth it but it's a big job 10 kilos lucky you only have to do it one i usually only do it once a year i try and get it over and done with hello michelle um i can live with the pain Annabelle, you know, the alternative. So it's all right. I get used to it. Hello, Leone and Evelyn Delaney. Yes, I, I I, boiled the kettle too. It's got my cup of tea and my best Christmas present ever. As I tell the boys and Greg Evans, Maureen, Sylvia, Aradia, Vanessa, Tegan, Michael Young from Kent and you are in the Garden of England oh my gosh what a beautiful part of the world welcome we are so glad you could all join us now if you are new I'm Kath Armstrong creator of the Cheapskates Club where our goal is to live life debt free cashed up and laughing even in 2023 when you know most people are thinking it's impossible but it's not you can save you can still save you can still pay down your debt you can still enjoy your life and that's what i want to talk to you about tonight hi beverly um because 29 years ago when disaster struck oh my gosh that sounds like a long time it feels like yesterday it really does but it's such a long it's, it's a lifetime ago you know 29 years ago when disaster struck we didn't know that we would be able to save we didn't know that we'd be able to pay our mortgage or put food on the table pay the electricity or the gas or the water or the car registration or the council rates we just didn't know we had to work it out so i know it can be done hi jane hello rosalie your sourdough um, baking looked delicious. I, I am impressed. Hello, Kylie. Um, Rosalie posted a picture over on Cheapskate's Chatter Guys of her sourdough baking. Absolutely amazing. Um, 29 years ago, yeah, it's a lifetime for for some some people longer than they've been alive. Oh, well, crikey, it is a long time ago. We figured it out. And you know what? It wasn't easy. Nothing, nothing is, nothing important is easy. There's always some effort involved. If it's important to you, you put the effort into it. Because it's important to you, it makes it a little easier, but you still have to put the effort in. And that goes with savings too. And so that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. I also, oh, Tegan, yeah, rates are just, um, just outrageous. Council rates, um, health insurance, don't get me started. There are a few things I think should be scrapped um, simply because we don't get, we don't get, good value for our investment in those things anyway but there's a few things we need to cross off the list first see I have a list <laughs> you can tell I'm prepared can't you 
um, I want to remind everyone of that it's birthday month and so we have our membership special and twenty dollars for new members for a year uh, I want to talk about I've started last week I, I mentioned that I've decided I will do a pantry tour um, I don't I don't do those I used to I used to and I stopped them a while back quite a while back simply because the the feedback the repercussions the trolling whatever you want to call it when I did a pantry tour every time someone my pantry was on television or in a newspaper or a magazine on another blog it was awful it was just awful and I know there's that thing you know haters are gonna hate well let them go hate somewhere else out of my way because after a while it just became to the point where I don't want to do that anymore so as you know I've stopped I haven't done a pantry tour for 12 13 years my pantry's changed a little bit over that time not a lot though um, so during September we will we will do a pantry tour bearing in mind that it will probably be spread over two or three videos because there's a lot to see there's a lot to see in a pantry and a lot to do in a pantry so keep an eye on your newsletter and it will be in the newsletter um, when that's happening the other exciting thing that I've been working on I think it's exciting is back to basics videos like really back to basics the very first one is how to boil water and you're going to go everyone knows how to boil water well you know what there are lots of different ways to boil water and depending on what you want to use that water for is how you should boil it there you go so that's our very first back to basics video and I will keep adding to those I've got about 12 done so far I will be adding to those as more basic things hit me that people don't know how to do basic things like boil water boil an egg fry an egg poach an egg scramble an egg um, little things like that make a basic scondo do pancakes um, how to make a simple soup a simple vegetable soup how to make a good stock how to make a stew make a pie bake a cake just basic simple things that everyone should be able to do but for one reason or another lots of people don't they skip that in school because I don't think they teach those things in school anymore and and it's easier to just go and buy the cake or the pie or you know eat out if you want eggs on toast so we're going to I'm going to do the back to basics so that will be keep an eye the videos will be posted here the notes will be in the members center for you um, and I'm hoping to get that started on Sunday so back to basics will be a Sunday video um, Oh, Sunday video I forgot what I was going to say a Sunday video um, if they help someone I'm really really happy that's all that I want them to do is help someone because every little bit helps and every skill we can build helps no dancing for joy Beverly likes back to basics well you know what my secret to boiling everything dry is now i hardly boil anything anymore <laughs> um when i i've uh, there's a video coming up friday i think it's scheduled for on freezer mash and i use the pressure cooker to do the potatoes for the mash simply because like I'll explain in the, in the video simply because I don't have to stand there and watch it 
I don't have to make sure the lid's on, the lid's off, the heat's up, the heat's down. I don't have to clean the stove if it's boiled over and I don't get burnt potatoes because it's boiled dry. I use, my, I use my pressure cooker to do things like that. I use the microwave a lot for rice and pasta and stuff like that. I have a steamer, an electric steamer. My sister-in-law gave it to me years ago for a Christmas present and I use that heaps for anything that needs to be boiled or steamed. There's a little fly in my face um, because I am hopeless at boiling things dry. I get sidetracked. I get sidetracked. Um, and get busy with other things and forget. So never mind. There we go. Um, hello Krista and hello Rachel everyone's here okay all right um, there you go well see you were meant to meet him Jane you were meant to meet him all right we've um, waffle I've, I've waffled on long enough so let's get started. I'm just going to bring up my notes so that I don't get sidetracked because otherwise we know I will. Um, so, whoops, let me go. Can't read them. What have I done? That's better. <laughs> I had them zoomed to 120%. They were like, Okay, um, everyone, need, well, everyone needs to save. We just need to. I don't care whether you are the richest person in the world or the poorest person in the world. We need to save. We all need to save. Simply because that, if we have savings, we have independence and we have um, we can be self-reliant and self-sufficient. So often a, que a question that pops up in contact us or different things is, well, how do I start saving? It's, it's too hard. I've got a mortgage. I've got children. I've got a credit card. I work. I don't work. We're on two incomes. We're on one income. I'm retired. I'm, I have no children, whatever. Everyone has um, reasons why they can't save, why they don't save. So when they say, well, how do I start? I can be a bit flippant at times. I don't mean to be. But, you know, my answer is usually, well, just stop spending. Just stop spending. If you don't spend it, you're saving it. Now, sadly, if you live in the real world, and most of us do, it's not always that easy to just stop spending because we still have to, you know, pay the bills. We still need to eat. We still need to keep the roof over our heads, pay for electricity, for medicines, clothing, education, and so on. So once I've got my flippant, sarcastic comment out of the way, I try to suggest nicely, let me just get a drink of water, I'm getting a bit hoarse here. I try to suggest nicely to anyone who asks the question that they actually track their spending for a minimum of two weeks, but preferably for a month. Now, it is not a popular suggestion. It is not. There's a whole um, lifestyle out there of not tracking your spending. But you know what? Tracking your spending works. If you don't know where your money is going, how do you know what you're spending it on? How do you know what are needs and what are wants? It was something I had to do way back when disaster struck. I didn't know it was tracking our spending back then because that was, you know, this was pre 
internet days, guys, you know, pre-website days, pre-blog days. It was a long time ago, but I had a notebook. And if I put petrol in the car, I wrote down how much it was, the date and how much it was. If I paid the milkman, because in those days we had a milkman, he came to the door, he left the milk every night, it was wonderful. Paid the milk bill, I had the date, what it was and how much it was. So that I knew where our our money was going if we paid, um, made a mortgage payment, if I paid the rates or I paid insurance, whatever, I wrote it down. Everything was written down, the baby's medicine, um, if we went to the doctor and we paid the doctor's bill, it was all written down. When you write down every cent you spend, you can see where your money's going. And, and once you've done that, it's fairly easy to determine whether you're spending your money on essentials like mortgage, food, or, or whether they're on optional things like entertainment, takeaway meals, extra clothing, um, non-necessary holidays, non-necessary craft supplies. That was me. Um, you need to be able to see the leaks before you can plug them. And the only way to do that is to make a note of where the money's going. So... After a couple of weeks of um, recording what you spend, you'll have enough information then to set up a basic spending and savings plan. In other words, a basic budget. Budget is, you know, people think it's a terrible word, but it's not. It's empowering to have a budget to control your money, to not not have to worry when the bills come in, to know that the money's there to pay for them, to know that you can afford Christmas or birthdays, to know that you're building savings so that if you want to move house, you're going to have the money to do it. Or if you want a new car, you're going to have the money to buy it. It's empowering to be in control. And that's... Um, that's really important for our own self-esteem. We need to be in control of our lives. It's really easy, really, really easy to just be like an ostrich, bury our heads, let someone else worry about it. Especially, especially if you are in a committed relationship, let someone else worry, let the partner worry about it. But it's not healthy. It's absolutely not healthy. So just a simple budget. Just draw up a simple budget. And you can, you can do it on a piece of paper. You can do it on your phone if you want to. You can download an app, but they get a bit complicated for me. So, you know, three columns. All you need three columns. Income. So that's your wages, your salary, and bonuses, interest, child support, whatever. Essential spending which is, you know, your rent or mortgage, um, any debt repayments, insurances, school fees, any spending that's fixed, um, council rates, that sort of thing. And then optional spending. And that that is food because <laughs> food, food is necessary, but the amount we spend on it is optional. <laughs> Um, clothing, entertainment, donations, gifts, um, electricity, gas, water, internet, phone. And you might think that those things, those utilities are essential. And in a way they are. But how much we spend on them is optional. Again, we get to choose how much we use, which affects how much we pay. Any spending that's variable should go in the optional column. I hope that's making sense. I'll, I'll put a link to the website anyway. Once you've done that, you can just work out how much money you've got to work with. If you get paid monthly, then I suggest you work on a monthly budget. If you get paid weekly, work on a weekly budget. If 
get paid fortnightly, work on a fortnightly budget and calculate your, calculate your expenses on that basis. Now, once you've done that, once you've done that, this is what we had to do, um, you've got your figures, you know where you stand, you've tracked your spending, you've got the budget set up, but the only way it's going to work is for you to be honest. So fill in the values as accurately as you can. Use your bank statements, your credit card statements, pay slips, grocery dockets, paid bills, whatever, so that you know the value of each item in your, in your, um, in your simple budget. Once you've got them listed, you've got incomings and then outgoings, you'll be able to see at a glance whether you have a debit, whoops, or a credit, woohoo, balance. Hopefully you'll have a credit balance and that is the beginning of your savings. If you have a debit balance, and that simply means that your outgoings are more than your incomings, your spending plan is going to show you where you can cut back and what areas have room for tweaking and um, um, adjusting. Now, if you're just starting out, the easiest places to tweak are the optional expenses, like I mentioned, food, entertainment, clothing, and your utilities. You can start by turning off the lights, going down to the one, one light rule. Um, the heater shouldn't be turned up more than 18. If it's cold, put on socks, put on slippers, put on a long sleeve t-shirt and a jumper. I often wear fingerless gloves in winter because it helps my hands, but we don't. If I'm working out of here, the fire's not on in here, it might be cooler in the lounge room. We don't turn the heating up. We leave it set at 18. It works. Um, so those things can be cut. And when you get your bill and it's still more than you thought, but your use is a lot less, that's when you get on the phone and ring around. Anyway, if you're going to start cutting, start with your grocery bill. Your grocery bill is the one bill we have complete and utter control over. Absolutely, we determine exactly how much we spend and what it is spent on. So try to spend less each week and put the leftover money towards your savings. If you're not already um, reading the $300 a month food challenge posts, log into the forum and do that. Um, follow them in the newsletter each week. You don't have to stick to $300 a month for your grocery budget. That's the suggested amount. But the, um, the process is the same. doesn't matter what your budget is. The process is the same. Trim your grocery budget. Buy generics. Shop the perimeter of the store only. Only buy fresh food in season. Um... Look for markdown meat and dairy products. Learn to moo things rather than buy them. The biggest thing, I think, the thing that will have the biggest impact on your grocery bill is buy ingredients. Buy ingredients. Build a pantry of ingredients. Why do we have ingredients? Because ingredients give us options. Once I realised that, and it was a long time ago, once I realised that, it's a game changer, guys. It means that I can look at the meal plan and it says meatloaf. And I go, I don't want meatloaf. I'd rather have meat pie. Well, you know what? Meatloaf ingredients, meat pie ingredients, almost the same. So I can turn the meatloaf into a meat pie because I've got ingredients. I don't have um, recipe specific food items in my pantry. They are all 
um, all interchangeable so that they work to make other things. Um, the next thing that we have most control over is entertainment. Um, Hannah was talking to me over the weekend. She was able to come down on the weekend and help me. And she was talking over the weekend about she was trying to get tickets to a concert. And I went, oh, that's nice. She said, oh, I'm not going because they're $800. $800. That's more than her mortgage repayment. So I'm glad, glad she was sensible enough to not go. But if that's what you've been used to doing, and lots of people have, because for a long time we've had very low mortgage repayments, very high incomes, a lot of disposable income. A lot of people, that's the price of the concert ticket. That's what we have to pay. So find, find another concert or, you know, look it up on YouTube and watch it on YouTube. Um, find other ways to keep yourself entertained and to keep your family busy. Pack picnics. Have a picnic in the backyard. Go to the local park. Um, drive a couple of suburbs over and find a new playground if you've got little children. Invite friends over for a potluck rather than going to a restaurant. That was that was something that we absolutely did when disaster struck. Our group of friends, we all had children around the same age. We all had similar interests, but we used to go out. Once a month, we'd go out and we'd go out to a restaurant. Well, all of a sudden, we didn't have the money to go to the restaurant or the cafe or, you know, wherever. So when it came around to the next one, I suggested that we host it at our house and it would be a potluck. Everyone would bring a dish to share and we'd just stay at home. And I, I sold it as, you know, we didn't have to worry about babysitting because the kids could come, come to our house because we were set up for little children. And, you know, we didn't have to get too dressed up because it was, you know, it was at our house. So it was reasonably casual and we could just relax. And we didn't have to worry about, you know, being at, being at the reservation on time, leaving, you know, not being the last to leave the restaurant, which happened a few times. So do something like that. It actually becomes fun. Um, and you can have them as themes. We ended up doing them as different themes. Um, once a month, we took turns in hosting and each one was a different theme. Join your library. Reread the books in your bookshelves. Um, download the Kin Kindle app. It's free. And then hunt for free ebooks to read on your tablet or or your phone or your computer. There's hundreds hundreds of the things you can do to entertain yourself for little or absolutely no outlay you just need to think about them now all those things are probably things that depending on where you are in your life may or may not work for you but you're able to think of things that you can do so Hopefully it's planted a seed for you. I'm just going to pop over here. And I'll go back. I just want to check the um, um, comments. Uh, only takes a lot of effort if you make it difficult. Don't make it difficult. Tracking spending is easy. You can do it on your phone if you want to. You can, you can do it on a notebook. I just have a little book and I just write the date, what it was, how much it cost. These days I I know I don't need, I don't worry about whether I paid in cash or, or card, but you can do that But I, so that I know where, where the money goes. I still do it. Um, yeah, Tegan does the same thing. 
Um, yep, Maureen's, Maureen's sons use a cash budget. You have control over cash. Interesting thing. We were talking about, we often talk about a cashless society. So um, last week, it must have been after last week's show, something popped up on my news feed and I, it was from one of the news channels about cashless society and it was actually an economist saying that cashless society is really not going to work. It's not going to be as wonderful as it's made out to be simply because there's too many risks involved with not being able to access your money, which won't actually be money because it's digital currency. Um, really interesting. And I thought, oh, wish more of them thought that way. Um, there you go. Years ago when we paid off the mortgage, we continued to put away the same amount as the mortgage repayments. You do save a lot of money. You're saving your mortgage repayments. It's how, how we buy new cars. We don't, we pay cash for our cars, but we put away each month whatever the loan repayment would be for that car. Then when it's time to update, um, we have the money saved plus whatever we get for selling or trading, usually selling, the other car, which is usually more than enough to cover the cost of the new car. It's an easy way to get what you want without being in, den in debt. Um, yep, take care of the little things and they look, tend big things look after themselves. What is it? Look after the pennies and the pounds. Take care of themselves, watch something like that. Um, yep, gold coins are a good way to save. Yeah, there's no more cash. There will always be cash. There has to always be cash. Um, there will always be a, um, I was going to say an underworld. That's not the word I'm looking for. But there will always be an element of, of society that simply doesn't, um, doesn't join in any sort of digital currency cashless society. Um, 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 Estelle, I'll, I'll cover that when I get down to it. But yes, have, you do, just one account doesn't work. Um, 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 oh no, my eyes are going to be. Um, um, I went to a concert on Saturday because it was a quiet lady in my chat. Since then, buying the ticket by her gave me a discount. The ticket was $20. Wow, that would, see that's a concert I'd go to for twenty dollars. Um, yes, I did. I did see that. Um, it's interesting. Oh, do you like it? It's a bit like, and I say this all the time. People must get sick of me saying it, but you know, if you say it, it's going to happen. If you say it often enough, it'll happen faster. So. The talk about AI has has sort of gone from way over here, and now it's just and it's just going so fast. The last three weeks, the talk has just been amazing. It's um, it's yeah. If you say it, it will happen. If you keep saying it, it's going to happen faster. Problem is, just because. A journalist says it or just because a politician says it doesn't mean it's good doesn't mean it's right doesn't mean it's honest um, it 
just means that you know you've got to figure out what their agenda is and why they want to want to um, push it. Uh, okay. Um, Saving it, keep saving Aradia. Um, we do use more paper now. I remember I was just a, a little girl when you know my mum and my aunties were going crazy saving exercise books and envelopes and every piece of paper they could find because there was going to, well, there actually was a paper shortage, there was something happened. Uh, something happened in Brazil that caused a paper shortage in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. But um, we do use more paper than ever and most of it's junk. Do you still get paper bills? I still like to get my um, utility bills as paper bills for my security. I'm old fashioned. I like I like the security. But the bill is like one page. Then you've got six, three or four other sheets of just rubbish. Um, um, your vac sealing, your veggies should be fine not sure how the beetroot will go joy it might bleed um if you put it in with something else um Well done for your son, um, Lisa. All right. One of them's a dollar, one of them's two dollars. For the paper bills, yes, they charge extra, the cheek of them. But anyway, um, I like the security of it. If I've got it, if I've got the paper bill printed in front of me on their letterhead, they can change what they like on mine. I have the proof. Um, uh, yep, hard proof, Cheryl. It certainly is. I like, I like it. I file them religiously, check them off. Um, whatever, okay. Okay. Oh, the yellow beet. I will, I will be interested to see how it goes, Joy. Interested to see how it goes. Very good. Okay, let's get back on track. Um, the other thing I did that saved us a bucket load of money was stopped buying new clothes, which meant I had to learn to sew. Now, it's not that I couldn't sew, it's just that I didn't really enjoy it because my mother was an absolutely amazing seamstress. She could, she, well, she, we used to, we'd be out somewhere and she'd look at something and she'd get out a pad and piece of paper and she'd draw it and go home and make it so i you know used to stand out the front of the country road store in doncaster and say i really like that and i like those shorts and i like that and mum would go have little drawings of them and she'd you know put little marks where buttons were or zips or whatever and she'd go home and make them for me so I never actually had had to sew because I had my mother to do it for me. But by the time disaster happened, we weren't living anywhere near my mum and I had three little kids to dress. 
and I still wanted them to be nicely dressed. Still wanted them to be nicely dressed. So I had to learn to sew, which meant that I had to find cheaper fabrics. And that's when I became very good at doing, again, what mum used to do, buying secondhand clothes, pulling them very carefully, taking them apart, and remaking them into something else or buying lengths of fabric from um, the bargain box or the op shop and turning them into something else. Now, you know, even if you didn't learn to sew or I didn't learn to sew, I had a wardrobe full of clothes. Wayne had a wardrobe full of clothes. The children had clothes. We weren't down to rags. So... You know, new clothes weren't necessary. They were optional. And I think for most of us these days, we have, you know, if you've got something on, something in the wash and something in the cupboard, you're covered. You've got, we, most of us would have more than that. So new clothes, well, they're, they're optional. And if you've got a wardrobe full of clothes and you think you have nothing to wear, take an afternoon, empty the wardrobe, put it all on the bed, go through it. If you have to put it together in outfits so you know what goes with what and wear it that way, do it. You know, just spend an afternoon um, lying out the different outfits, try them on, add different jewellery, try them with different shoes and so on and see what you can come up with so that you might not need to buy new clothes. Now, the advantage of doing that now in 2023 is our fashion is fairly stable. There's very little extremes. Whereas if you go back to um, the 90s and then into the 80s and the 70s, fashion in those, those decades was extreme. I remember, you know, the massive shoulder pads in the 80s and the the drop waist dresses the pleats the very long skirts um and then go to the 90s and we had um bigger tops very narrow leg trousers or even stirrup pants so glad they've gone so our fashion now you know is fairly fairly stable and it's quite easy to look well-dressed without buying new clothes. So new clothes are optional. Um, now, I mentioned electricity bills before. Oh, my gosh. I became, I became the, the, the harpy of the power, point, power light switch. Turn that light off. Who left the bathroom light on? Who was in the kitchen and left the light on? Turn it off. Turn that PowerPoint off. I used to go around before I went to bed every night and turn all the PowerPoints off. The only one left on was the fridge and the freezer. Everything else came off. Nowadays, I'm not quite so bad, but we do turn everything off as much as we can at the wall in rooms we're not using it. Um, I even turn the washing machine off at the wall. Um, so... We've got the, the two freezers, the fridge, the dishwasher and the cooktop and oven because they're all really hard to get to. Well, the fridges, fridge and freezers need to be plugged in, but the dishwasher, the cooktop, the oven are too hard for me to get to to turn them on and off all day, every day or every night and every morning. So, but everything else just gets turned off. Even the clock, we've got a digital... Um, clock radio in our bedroom so it's easy turn it off at the wall turn it back on it resets itself we don't even have to reset it how good is that that is definitely an advantage to living in 2023 um use table lamps instead of big light fittings um the microwave instead of the oven or the electric fry pan instead of the oven um, although, depending on what you're cooking, the oven can actually be cheaper. 
interesting, isn't it? Because we're always, we're brainwashed into thinking that using our oven is going to cost us a fortune when it can actually be cheaper depending on what we're cooking. Um, I'm sure by now everyone's switched to the low flow water saving shower heads. Um, if you haven't, you should. Um, I remember we updated the shower head in our main bathroom that the kids used. Um, it was a long time ago now. Our water bill dropped $9 in three months <laughs> just from that one thing. <laughs> that was that was just mind-boggling how much. And it's not that the, the kids, we still only had, you know, five-minute showers and I'd be rapping on the door, it's time to get out, it's time to get out. They were never allowed to have long showers. That was just amazing. So you can see where you can make little cuts simple little cuts to save money another one on water rain barrels we've got rain barrels under the down pipes and i use them for watering the garden we've got one outside the laundry that the washing machine water goes into and i use it we use it on the grass um, to save water because the vegetable garden needs to be watered in summer it needs to be watered so I don't really want to pay for water. Rainwater's there. <laughs> so they were they were just from Bunnings. They're nothing huge. They're about $60 each, I think. Um, and they have been, they've actually been really good. We've had them for a long time now. So little things, little things. We did them and they actually helped um helped us cut our cut our spending and when when you've um got a whole lot of money that you're not spending that means you've got money that you can save but you actually have to bank it into your savings account because if you don't do that it's not saved it's just not spent but sitting in your general account there's that pesky fly again that's sitting in your general account it is not saved it is just not spent so one thing i would suggest everybody has is a separate savings account keep it separate from your general account your bills account whatever it is so that when you move the money into it that's it it is there it is truly saved now Sometimes you might only be able to move over $5. Other times you might have $50 to move or $100. As long as, you, as long as you move it and it's in your savings account so that it can build up, it's all good. <laughs> don't, don't feel pressured to um, I have to save $100 a week. When you don't have a hundred dollars a week to save that's putting unnecessary stress on yourself and it won't work it just won't work because it's well for a start if you don't have that hundred dollars a week you don't have it you can't do it you just can't do it so do what you can one thing that really helped us once once we got ourselves sorted was um, 10 10 80 save um, give 10 percent save 10 percent live on 80 percent now for a long time for nearly four years we didn't have a regular income it was very sporadic um, some weeks we had lots of money because we had lots of work and other weeks we had no money coming in because there was no work so we had to be very 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 rigid in our budgeting and in our spending but that also meant we we were good with our saving too because as soon as it wasn't needed for the essentials it went into savings and that really helped it meant we could um we had options so that we could still have a holiday now it was a really you know usually a really flash holiday where we packed the kids in the car and put the tent tent in the trailer and off we went somewhere and free camped for a weekend but we were able to do it 
because we were a little bit disciplined. It does take discipline. It takes work. Like I said before, nothing, it's, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. But it's very satisfying and it's very gratifying to know that your bills are paid, your, your debts are being paid off or you've paid them all off. And you've got money in the bank. Once you've built some savings, you can start working on an emergency fund. That will take a little longer. And it's going to take a little longer because it's it's a much bigger picture for your emergency fund. But it can be done. Um, um, now... I'm just trying to find where I finished off. Um, uh, dun -dun 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 -dun. Oh gosh, what's been going on? Okay. Okay. my uh, all right okay I think I found where I finished off before so let me start again um, okay. um, Selena I keep seven of of all our paperwork and so January each year one year gets um, shredded to make room for a new year. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. I was watching someone try to... Um, Count out change um, a couple of weeks ago too. It was very sad. Just trying to teach them how to handle money. Um, well, I could do a video on mending. I don't know that my mending would be um, would be um, up to a professional standard though. But yeah, we could talk about mending. It, it's not difficult if we can you know um it's really not difficult even my darns are getting better there you go see i'm not alone delaney did it too country road when i was teenager and in my early 20s country road had the nicest clothes and nicest styles and Oh, gosh, they were gorgeous. It helped that um, the sister of a girl I worked with actually um, sewed for them before they went offshore. She sewed for them here in Australia. And so occasionally I would get um, lengths of fabric too, which was really nice. Um Yeah, I like knitwit. I'm a fully certified knitwit. Um, take that however you like. Um, um, do you know what annoys me? Who was saying about buying clothes and they go to holes? Do you know what annoys me more? This is my mother coming out in me, but... You buy something that's a patterned fabric and the pattern doesn't match. On the seams, the pattern doesn't match. I nearly go insane 
it sends me spare. I won't buy it. If the pattern doesn't match, be it a floral or a stripe or a, a check, if it doesn't match, that to me is just sloppy, really sloppy. And I don't care how expensive it is. And there's a lot of very expensive clothes where the patterns don't match. There's no pattern matching. Oh, nearly drives me insane. Um, Hand-me-downs for kids most de definitely are. Power Nazi hair. Yeah. Um, Uh, there you go Jane Jane's grandmother and mother so Jane does beautiful sewing she's she's done some gorgeous things and she knits so nicely she shows some of her knitting it's just beautiful um, Estelle, just walk around behind your sister and turn them off. Um, uh, um. Krista, look in op shops. I often find... Um, Knitwit and what was quick sew patterns in op shops. Um, they'll be dollar fifty, two dollars each. I just checked that they haven't actually been cut, that they're still in the multi sizes, so that I can trace them off. But yeah, look in op shops for them. Um, yeah, Selena, I keep. I keep all our all our um, financial records for seven years. Um, the paper copies for seven years. We do scan them, but um, we have Kmart ones. They actually look like little lanterns, like little oil lamps. They're really cute. They work really well. We take them camping with us. Um, which works really well. Um, we have portable chargers last year for Christmas or the year before for Christmas, can't remember. I gave all three kids and Wayne a portable charger, solar charger for their phones, their tablets, their camera battery, whatever, that works really well. Um, I got them at Kmart. They're about $20 each, I think. Um, we just sit them in the front window. They charge up really, really well. Um, they're not the fastest, but who cares? They don't have to be. Um... Oh, well done, Selena, with having something for your washing machine. Um, okay. Sorry, guys, I'm still trying to. Having cash on hand is like a skydiver having a parachute. Yes, works well. Hello, Annette. Um, okay. Oh, Selena, I'm glad it's not just me. I won't buy clothes that are mismatched. It nearly sends me spare. Um, All right. Um, I 
that's all right. You can build your emergency fund back up anytime. Anytime. You can build it up, start from scratch. That's what it's for. It's for emergencies. It's to get you through. What I would do now, though, is you've got your new washing machine. You know how much it costs. So build into your weekly budget. In in your um, part of your budget, you should have your... Um, we have a column that's... Um, it's not maintenance, but it's household. And it covers things like replacing the fridge, the washing machine, if we need a new lounge or a new bed or whatever. And we pay into that each each month as part of our budget so that when we do go to buy a new lounge, the money's there. If we go to buy a new washing machine, the money's there. New freezer, the money's there. We've already saved for it. We don't have to worry about taking it out of the emergency fund. Um Just by plain colours are still easy solved. Um, um, okay, all right. So it is possible to save even in 2023 with interest rates going up and food prices going up. Did we all see the news today, this morning? I think it was announced this morning. Actual inflation on food, 40% over the last 12 months. Like we couldn't have told them that. Hello, they only need to ask us. We can tell them how much things cost and how much they've gone up. It's hitting us all. <laughs> it's hitting us all really, really hard. But just remember, you can save. It might not be the same um, all the time. Same amount all the time, depending on what what your expenses are, what debts you have, so on and so forth. But you can save. If you really want to, you can save. And if that thought of, makes you think that you're going to be deprived, look at it this way. You're saving until you build however much you want in your savings. Once you've reached that goal, you can stop if you want to. So it's not forever. You are not going to not eat out forever. You're not going to not buy new clothes forever. It's just for in the, the grand scheme of your lifetime, it's a little tiny, tiny piece. It's not forever. So you can do it. You can do just about anything. If you really put your mind to it, when it's not forever. So think of it that way. Don't think of it as you're missing out on going out with the girls for dinner or going to the movies or going away for the weekend or whatever. Don't look at it that way. Look at it as you are that much closer to reaching your savings goal. And once you've reached your savings goal, then if you really want to, you'll be able to do whatever it is. Okay. So... remember it's not money's not really saved until you actually put it in a savings account so if you don't have one get one all righty quickly remember birthday special twenty dollars for new members i'll put the link below um the link to if you're not subscribed to our weekly newsletter there is a link down there um back to basics starts on sunday Sunday afternoon I'm thinking I'll post it about set it for three o'clock just because I think that's afternoon tea time on a Sunday for us um, I've started work on the pantry tour um, did all the spices and herbs yesterday which was like whew, while I was doing I was doing my inventory at the same time so that I know what I've got to top up so killing two birds with one stone with that um and that's the three things on my little list all righty time to go but before i go thank you so much for sticking with me right to the end if you know someone that might like this video there's a share button please click that share button it sends them a link and if you haven't already thumbs up would be muchly appreciated and if you're not already 
not already subscribed to our channel, um, hit the subscribe button. We will be honoured to have you as a subscriber so that we can notify you every time we upload a new video or go live. It helps our channel to grow and be recognised more easily too. And the easier it is to find us, the easier it is for us to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but it can still be done, even in today's crazy, crazy world. So I'll be back next week with another Cheats Kate's Club live show to save you money, time and energy. But until then, have a great week and happy cheapskating, everyone. See you then.